Hey guys, welcome to Season 2 of Electricity 101. I just wanted to thank everyone for the support and feedback that I've gotten on the channel so far. It's been really, really awesome and very helpful. Uh, I'm going to be making some changes starting here in Season 2 in an attempt to make the videos more to the point and also try and shorten the length of them as well. What we're going to do, we're going to have a brief look at what the circuit does. Then we'll do a build of the circuit, and then at the end of the video, I'll leave a few important things for you guys to note about the circuit. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here I have a door controller paired to a door and controlled by this switch. Now, with how the game sits currently, anybody can approach this switch, whether they have TC access or not, or whether they know the code to the door or not, turn the switch on, providing it has power flowing to it, and the door will open or close if they turn it off. So I've come up with a potential solution to this problem, which is an electrical code lock to your code locks. And this is it here. Now, to supply power to my door controllers, I first have to enter my code in. For this demo, I've set it to one, two, three, four. The first three displays are controlled by these timers. However, this last one is using a more secure method as I have to know the frequency the display is running on to program it. What I'll do first is I'll program these first displays. So the first one is one, the second one is two, the third one is three. However, to get this last one programmed, I have to, like I said, know the frequency. Now, in this demo, I've set it to 5858, and only once all four displays are entered correctly is power allowed to flow, therefore allowing me to open my door. So if I press this button, you'll see the display change. I press it again, and a couple more times to get it up to four, and now my switch is actually provided with power. So now I can flick the switch and the door opens. Now what I've got here on the end is just another timer which resets the circuit or locks the power down. So if there's any switches in the on position like there is right now that are providing power to the door controller, they're automatically going to close when I do this as well. Now to reset this, I have to program the code in again, using it wirelessly. So let's look at how to build it. Okay guys, so if you're looking at building this yourself, you will need four solar panels, three root combiners, five electrical branches, three splitters, four timers, four counters, three AND switches, an RF receiver, and an RF transmitter. Now, I've already gone and laid them out on the wall here. You can copy this layout if you want, or you can try a different layout to whatever suits your needs. So we're gonna go through and wire all this up. Just follow along or slow it down if you need to. So first we're going to, of course, get our power source ready. Just going to connect all these up to the solar panels here. Now, keep in mind, guys, that this circuit, although it uh, is very secure for your uh, for your power in your base, it does actually consume quite a bit of power, which is why I'm using four solar panels here. Okay, so we're going to take the branch out of this electrical branch and run it over to the timer on the wall here. Now, I've set this one to 14. Next. We're going to take the timer here and connect it to the power in of the splitter. We're going to take a, one of these outputs here and connect it to the electrical branch, which is just set to two. We're going to run each of these outlets here to the clear counter function of each timer. Oh, sorry, counter. Next, we're going to take the power out of this electrical branch and run it to this electrical branch here. We're going to take the power out of this electrical branch. This is probably a, a very important step, so make sure you do this correctly. 
and we're gonna take it up to the power in of this counter. We're gonna take the branch out here and take it across to this electrical branch. I've set the branch here to 24 and I've set the branch here to seven. Next, we're going to take the branch out and run it up to the power in of this splitter. And we're going to connect all these power outs on the splitter and run it across to the power in of all these counters. Next, I'm going to take the electrical branch power out here and run it up to the power in of this splitter. I'm going to take one of these power outs just like I did before and put it into the electrical branch here. And then each of these power outs is going to run straight across to these timers here. Now the final power out here is actually going to run into the RF receiver here. Alright, so we're pretty close to being done. What we're going to do is put these timers up to the increment counter of each of their corresponding counters. And the last one is, of course, going to be hooked up to the RF receiver. Next, what we're going to do is going to take the inputs of these hand switches and connect them to the pass through of the counters. And then take the power out of those and switches and hook it up to the very top and switch there. With that all wired up, there's only a couple of things left to do. Firstly, I'm going to set all the timers here to one second. We don't need them to be on for a length of time, so we just need them to send out a quick pulse of power. Next, we just have to set our code. So I'm going to choose 1, 2, 3, 4 again, just for simplicity's sake. And the final step is just setting the frequency. So I'm going to choose a different frequency to what we were in the first part of the video. So I'm going to get my transmitter here, hold down right click and just set it to 1, 2, 3, 4. Very simple. Then I'm going to set my transmitter, or oh, my receiver here, sorry, to the same frequency of 1, 2, 3, 4. Now everything should work. So let me show you what happens internally on the circuit. So each time the display or the counter reaches its value, it sends its pulse of power out here into the AND switch. You can see the green light light up. Both displays on this one have to be activated here on the AND switch for power to pass through to the next AND switch. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So you can see that this one is now complete, so this side of the circuit is now complete, and it's passing through power to here. We're going to go ahead and do it on this side as well. And then finally, we're going to program the last section here. Now. This is why I said it's very important to get the power out running to this last display. Now, realistically, you could hook it up to any of the displays, but what you want happening is a bulk of the power flow or the remainder of the power flow that isn't required to actually power the circuit itself to be going directly into one of the displays and therefore be being passed through. The way that the AND switches work, which I'm sure most of you already know, is they take the bigger of the power source and allow that to pass through when both inputs are receiving power. So we want enough power to go into the circuit, but then we want the remainder of the power from our power source to be coming out the top here, which is a leftover of 39. This is going to be the rest of the power going to all our switches powering our door controllers. Alright guys, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it, and uh, we're just going to talk about a couple of things uh, to note on this circuit. So, the reason why it's probably better to use RF receivers over timers, at least having one in your circuit makes it so much more secure, uh, especially if it's hidden away, is that with how the counters work at this point in time, even if uh, they're set to pass through at a certain number, if they go above that number, so if we remember that 
the first counter here is set to 1, even if it goes above that number, it's still allowing pass through. So it's as if the code, um, with how Face Punch has done it, has set it just as a minimum that it has to reach. So if someone came into your base, found the circuit, even if it was hidden away, uh, like it was in the first part of the video, and they realized what it was, uh, if they'd seen a video, uh, this video or, or something similar, then they might be able to figure out, they could just type in a random code, keep fiddling around with it until they saw the power on the door controllers come on. So if you have the RF receivers here, and especially if they're hidden away like in honeycomb or spread out in your base, um, then it makes it so much harder, especially if they're set to all different frequencies. The next point I want to talk about is that this circuit uses a fair bit of power. Now, some might say that this is the cost of security. I would say that as well, um, if you're really paranoid about this sort of stuff happening. But let's look at the figures. So, our four solar panels here are generating 80 units of power. All that's coming out up the top here is 39 units of power. So it's using pretty much two full solar panels, um, or just over really, just to power the circuit. And that's even before any of our door controllers um, have received power. Now, this circuit is really only designed for security measures so things like door controllers um, and anything else they might add later on as well so to power your lights you don't really need this kind of security feature so there's a couple of options you can either have more solar panels or wind turbines or whatever you run at on your roof and they can be connected uh, completely separate or you can insert an, another electrical branch here uh, and divert some of the power away because you may not need all that 39 units of power to power all your door controllers. Um, that's a lot of door controllers, really. So if you divert some of the power away, then it completely bypasses the security system. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for this episode. If you have any comments or questions, then please hit me up below in the comments. really appreciate any feedback you guys have, and I love responding to all your questions uh, and your comments in general. As usual, if you didn't like the video, hit that thumbs down, but if you did like the video, smash that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description below. Any links that I have mentioned in this video will also be in the description below. Otherwise, guys, we will see you in the next one. Take care.